Happy Mother's Day to all of the women uh, that worship with us and all the women of the world. This is a day to celebrate all women, no matter um, whether we're actually mothers or not. Um, all of us uh, play our part in the caring of and supporting of other people. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship today, I just want to say welcome and thank you for being with us here at Normandy Park United Church of Christ. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are indeed welcome here. So as we prepare for worship, I'm going to read some words that are paraphrased by Pastor Amy Roon uh, from Julia Ward Howe. She was the woman who was the kind of started and kicked off Mother's Day all those years ago. So from Julia Ward Howe, the original Mother's Day was a call for all women who have hearts to join together and demand peace for our children. Let us listen to the sounds of the singing bowl. I invite you to sing with me, This Is The Day, our opening song. Jill and I will lead the words of gathering. I'll read the light print, and if you'd like to join Jill in reading the bold. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again. We yearn to know your presence and your love now and always. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. If you know me, you know God. We pray to know you more deeply, that we may know God more intimately, now and always. Jesus said, ask me for anything and I will do it. Help us to ask for the right things, that which is life-giving and healing, Lord Jesus Christ that we may fulfill your will now and always. Jesus said, believe in me and follow me. Help us to worship you fully, believing and following now and always.
So our opening prayer this morning is um, that whole body meditation that we did also uh, during Lent from Julian of Norwich. And um, this again was found from the APC, the chaplain website, uh, chaplain association that I belong to. And it's a prayer that chaplains do or invited to do when they're about to go visit patients. And so it's just a really nice um, interactive uh, prayer. So please follow along with me. So hands at the waist, cupped to receive. May I await this day, not as I expect, hope, or imagine, but just as it is in this moment. And we reach our hands up, open. May I allow the day to come and be what it is without meeting my expectation. Hands at our hearts, cupped towards our bodies. May I accept it as a gift, whatever comes or does not come. Accept that I am not in charge. Accept the in infinity of the holy be to be present, whether or not I am aware. Hands outstretched to be responsive. And may I attend the day with actions that the holy invites me to take from this stance of openness. Amen. So our intergenerational moment um, today is an idea that I've been having and I'm thinking you guys want to join me in this and share your own different saints of the church and saints of, of our past and maybe our present. I know Lynn had purchased a, a book for Sunday school that we could be able to use here as well. But I wanted to lift up today Phyllis Wheatley. Um, she's an American saint and um, had lived, I think, in the Boston area many, many years ago. So Kevin, if you want to go ahead and stop the screen share. I've got a book that I just want to show you this little cover here. It's um, called Feminist Saints. So we're lifting up women today, right? So Phyllis Wheatley, um, I first encountered her when I was in college going through my uh, Norton Anthology of American Literature and in my, one of my English American Literature classes. And um, in this little book, Phyllis Wheatley is considered the matron saint of readers. And the reason is, is because she is the um, first African-American woman uh, to be published as a poet in the United States and only the second woman to be published in the United States. Um, and she was born in 1753 in West Africa. She was sold into slavery at seven years old, she came to the United States and was purchased by Mr. Wheatley, and they named her after the slave ship that she came across. I don't even know if you can imagine, I can't imagine as being seven and having to come across the ocean and um, being in a totally different country, a totally different land where you weren't even considered fully human. But her family, this family that she was purchased into, thought that she was a smart kid. And so they started to uh, offer her uh, some lessons. And so she began to learn how to read in English and to read in Latin. And people didn't really believe that she could do these things because how could somebody that's not totally human, right, do these things, but she could. And so they um, really, she became an inspiration. And uh, Henry Louis Gates Jr., if any of you know him from Finding Your Roots, he called her the Oprah Winfrey of her time. She traveled to London. Um, she uh, wrote le a letter to uh, George Washington that was published. She was quite a remarkable woman. And at the death of her owner, Mrs. Wheatley, she was freed and she was allowed to marry uh, a freed man and they had children. But sadly, she died in poverty and her children all died. So she, her legacy didn't get to continue other than in her writings. So today we lift up Phyllis Wheatley and um, the inspiration that she is to us and just acknowledging that um, being a woman, being a woman of color, uh, being a mother, all of it is hard and has never been easy. Um, and uh, we need to remember that people have persevered through hard times and looking back in history, we are reminded of those things. So let us celebrate Phyllis today. I'm just going to read to you um, one of, a little portion of one of her poems, and it kind of, it speaks to her time and place. 
These are oft quoted uh, verses of hers. Some view our sable race with scornful eye. Their color is a diabolic dye. Remember Christians, Negroes, black as Cain, may be refined and join the angelic train. Thank you, God, for Phyllis Wheatley. Amen. Please accept the prayer of reconciliation. Ever gracious God, from generation to generation, you call forth faithful people to be willing servants of truth. You fill us with strength and hope. Yet we find it is often not enough. We pray both for great faith and for easy lives. But we know these things seldom exist together. When we have prayed to only avoid a time of trial, we actually need to pray for strength and confidence to face the challenges that come with faithfulness and a life filled with uncertainty. Forgive us, God, for lacking trust, for getting to lean into you. Make us strong, make us wise, so that we may rejoice in your unending grace, even in the times of deepest suffering. In Christ we pray, amen. Please hear these words of assurance. The good news is, we are already forgiven. Let us continue to seek God's truth and God's love. We have two passages this morning. The first is from Psalms 31, 1 through 5. And the second is John 14, verses 1 through 14. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do, let, do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden from me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. And our second reading is from John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I have said to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. 
Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our reflection title this morning is Love is the Way. So John 14 is like an old friend to me. So many times I have read it at the bedside of one who needs reassurance at the hospital or with family members of someone who is dying. I have shared these words in memorial services and at graveside services. My mind flashes to all of the times and places when I hear or read this gospel passage. But at the same time, I am pulled by biblical scholars and commentators who remind me this text is not actually about a future promise in heaven, though we certainly interpret it that way, and that's okay. You know, these words of comfort were really meant for living disciples, facing impending death, the death of Jesus and his resurrection. Thomas says just exactly what I think many of the disciples were wondering. Jesus, where are you going? Just what are you trying to tell us? What is this way you are talking about? Help! There was just so much the disciples didn't grasp. And the ground beneath their feet was shifting. There was just so much uncertainty for them. Where did they fit? What did Jesus mean? The disciples were uncertain. I keep bumping into this word, uncertain. These are uncertain times or our future is uncertain. And I've returned to my Pema Chodron books with titles like Comfortable with Uncertainty. Even the Harvard Business Review has released an article on uncertainty recently. It's true. We don't know where all of this is headed. We do not know the entire trajectory or the after effects or even the upcoming effects that this pandemic is having and will have. We don't know how long it will truly take to suppress the coronavirus. And if we as Americans will have the patience and the fortitude to put the welfare of others before our own needs. Many days, it seems to me, we are at risk of failing each other, placing the almighty dollar above human life. Uncertainty is in the air and we can't seem to escape it. We want to but there is no means to do so right now. And I have to say, it doesn't help that our brains are not hardwired to accept uncertainty. Our brains are actually wired, and I got this from Jack Cornfield, a Buddhist teacher, our brains are wired for survival reasons to be able to predict the future. It goes back all the way back to our fight, flight, or freeze response that was hardwired in us and that amygdala so many millennia ago. Those basic fear responses that we have. If we are taking a walk and a saber-toothed tiger jumps out and tries to eat us, we sure as heck are going to do things differently in the future so that doesn't happen again. We will begin to predict when we might see that tiger and what we will do to not let it eat us. We try to manage our fear about having another encounter with that tiger. 
it's no wonder then right now with uncertainty in the air that fears runs rampant and that it is manifesting in all sorts of ways. You can follow social media or watch the news or read your news app to know. You could even go down some terrible rabbit holes with some fantastic conspiracy theories. Uncertainty and fear are companions. Here are some uncertainties that I came up with and I'm sure you have your own and I promise to offer only a few so as to not totally overwhelm us. Some of my uncertainties are, will the kids go back to their classrooms in the fall? What will work look like for those that are not essential workers in the future? Will someone in our congregation get sick? Will I get sick? Will we ever be able to sing in church again? Because it sounds like that's going to be a really hard thing to do. It's also very human, the stuff that we're grappling with. And Jesus' words and this lectionary text today couldn't be better timing. We know that the followers of Jesus were facing an uncertain future. We know that they were dealing with fear and uncertainty. Life was not going to be the same. And so Jesus, their beloved rabbi, moves to comfort them and to help them see what they had a hard time seeing, that trusting in God and love is the way. Love is the way forward despite fear, despite uncertainty, despite everything. And how is love with that big L achieved? By following Jesus, by loving Jesus and loving others. By loving Jesus and following Jesus, the gates are flung wide open in God's own house. We are invited in to arrest, to rest, to abide, to trust, to have life and to have life abundantly in the here and now. Jesus invites us in right now to dwell with God. God is our refuge and our resting place. And we don't have to wait until we die and go to heaven to find rest in God. We don't have to wait to trust that divine love will see us through, a divine love that invites us to allow that love to pour over us so that we might share that love with others. For me, this love is captured best in the idea and practice of loving kindness. Love without compassion isn't the kind of love that we re need right now. We need that divine love that calls us to have compassion for the other, the person who doesn't agree with us, the person who is easier to hate. If the gospel reading isn't being shared at a funeral, then it is often used as a text of exclusivity, as bullet points in a sermon to say, if you don't accept Jesus as the way and the truth and the life, then you are out. All that you are will not be accepted in the final judgment. Bam. Using this text as a text of exclusivity is a great way to shame people. But the thing is, Jesus came to save us from our own shame, not to promote it. So I have to reject this viewpoint. I have to reject any idea that Jesus wanted to shame people to make them feel unworthy and unloved. I have to reject this idea that Jesus decided in this farewell discourse to exclude those that might long to dwell in God's household. What I have encountered and what certainty I do have is that Jesus' way and truth and life included all people, not just some of the people, all of the people. Now, before I get on some kind of smug moral high horse, I need to clarify that Jesus really offers a way forward for everyone 
and not just the people that I want on my team. And I could make a pretty good team, I'm sure. So who are some of the people that you find hard to love? Who are some of the bad guys and the bad actors that wouldn't make your list? These are the people that we, and now I'm preaching to myself if no one else, these are the people that we need to spend some time praying for and learning to love. Maybe we do this at a safe distance, and that is what is socially appropriate right now anyway. But before we judge, we could also and always pray. Pray for grace, pray for compassion, and we can even pray for self-compassion. We can pray for God to take our anger and our hatred and our fear and carry it all for us for a while. In fact, we need to ask God to carry our traumas, our heartaches, those places that need forgiving and healing. When we do this, when we engage in relationship with God, even when we feel like God isn't listening, God is there. God hears us. God is with us. Praying is a major way that we connect with God. We take a step closer to resting in God's own house. It's a lifelong practice following this way of Jesus, following this way of love. I will close with a portion of a poem prayer by Graham Cook titled Coming and Going. Lord Jesus, we are glad that you came from God. In all our anxieties, be for us our way, our truth, our life. Teach us from scripture and the present your truth. In word and deed, keep us with you and with God. Show us in good times and bad your life. In joy and in sorrow, hold us with you and with God. Amen. So friends, our sung response is going to actually be one that we share off of YouTube. And so we're stopping recording because we will now um, move on to the next part of our worship service where we do our joys and our concerns with one another. And uh, Val already says the joy is that she enjoyed that song this morning. Thank you, Val. So just quickly looking at our prayer list, um, just wanna acknowledge the names here, Belinda, Belinda's mom, Bev, Leo, Rod, Katie, uh, Debbie and family, Tomio, who's healing up, I hope, Richard, uh, CB's uh, sister and family, CB, and Vern, and Mac, and Steve. So we'll pause our recording now. Um, I have understood, and maybe somebody has more of an update than I do. Art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And please sing with me. We'll now um, move into that time of sharing our time, talent, and treasure. And see on our screen here, there's there's many things. And Lynn has already raised a hand. So Lynn, would you like to share? 
go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Um, yes, I just want to remind people, um, we have two uh, Christian Ed items coming up this week. On Tuesday, we will continue our brown bag noontime uh, book study of um, climate church, climate world, and we're uh, working on chapter three. And we'll discuss the questions at the end. And if you don't have the book or you don't have time to read it, um, come anyways. We it's a, a lively discussion, and um, it's you know helps to read the book. But we would uh, appreciate your any input you had. And then the second item is Bible and Brews is coming uh, starting up again on Friday at seven o'clock, and we're going to be following the lectionary. So um, the pre-reading is um, Acts chapters one through four, and we hope to see you there too with your brew in hand. And Amy or myself can be, help you. Um, if you have any questions on either of these, you can um, notify, uh, ask us. And you'll notice that um, there's still the address up for the Des Moines Area Food Bank if you'd like to send a donation their way. I saw on Facebook, Connie shared, doesn't look like Connie is with us at church today, but um, it looks like they got a $35,000 grant for donation. So that I think is a big um, joy for them. Uh, but I know that uh, they could still use our assistance as well. Alice uh, wants to make sure that we know that we can still give for the crop walk into church world service. Uh, we had a team of walkers walking at a social distance last Sunday and kind of in the rain and in the sunshine. And um, one person said, my supervisor, my, my, my boss saw, saw us all gathered at the, at the church around the labyrinth and wondered what we were protesting. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't a protest, it was the crop walk. So, so she uh, shared that with her boss. So it was the crop walk and we weren't protesting anything. And yes, we were standing very far apart from one another. So, um, and it was a small group. Anyways, if you would like to still give uh, donations to the crop walk, we, we are uh, trying to, I think, uh, at least tie with Southminster Presbyterian Church. So there's a little competition going on. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? I think Kevin's got one. Yes, uh, this being the second Sunday of the month, which is when we typically sing happy birthday to folks, I invite us all to sing uh, this month to Mac, Yoko, Belinda, Megan, Madison, Joanne, Nancy B, Janet, Don, Jill, Erickson Keeney, and Josie. So please sing with me. So you are invited to keep sending your pledges in. Um, Kirsten is in the office some days of the week and is happy to put your checks in the safe for when Lynn comes and picks them up. So just know that we're still, of course, always taking our morning's offering through the mail right now and other, other ways as well, donation button on our website or through um, auto pay through your uh, bank account. So let us hear these words. God bless our tithes and offerings, the time and talent that we share with each other and our world. May our offerings heal and make whole the lives of all your children. And bless those who give and those who long to give, that we may become living stones of mercy, grace, and justice in the house of your creation. Amen. And please sing with me our offertory response.
Thank you all for joining us this morning. It's a beautiful, glorious day out there and there's so many ways that you could be spending it. So thank you again for choosing to spend it here with us. Our blessing from God. Love is the way. Love is the truth. Love is the life. Go in peace and go in love. Amen. Amen. Our closing song is called Let Love Go Forward, which we did a couple weeks ago. And we'll sing this through twice. Let love go forward from this time and place. Shine its healing light in a gentle embrace. Let love go forward from this place and time. Let love shine. Let love go forward from this time and place. Shine a healing light in a gentle embrace. Let love go forward from this place and time. Let love shine. Go in peace and love. Thanks be to God. You'd like to stick around for some coffee hour you want to show off a cat or a dog or a small child we are here for it we're here for you happy mother's day happy